Hi guys and welcome back to Beetle TV for all of those of you who have subscribed already and if you're new to the channel then welcome to Beetle TV, the YouTube channel where I, a beginner beetle keeper, document my experiences and relay all that I learn back to you. Seeing how successful my previous how-to guides have been, I decided I'd do a new one for you in this video today. We're going to be taking a look at a comprehensive beginner's guide to caring for adult beetles. Now, the first thing to remember is that there are thousands of species of beetles. You have the main categories common amongst beetle keepers, such as rhinoceros beetles, flower beetles, and stag beetles, as well as many subdivisions within these three main categories. Each of these will have their own different preferences and needs, so this guide will act as a kind of umbrella video focusing on the fundamentals of keeping adult beetles so all important things that apply generally to all kinds of beetles. The very first step to keeping an adult beetle is to think about what kind of home you want to house your beetle in. You can house them in a large tub which will be easy to maintain, or if you're wanting more of a display piece then you will want to be looking at a terrarium. However you choose to house your beetle though, the size of the container is really important. As I mentioned before, there are many kinds of beetles that are sold as pets and so the size of your beetle will vary. However, a general rule is that the height of your container or terrarium should be able to fit a minimum of 6 inches of substrate and then at least double the length of your beetle in height on top of this. There should also be plenty of floor space on top of the substrate to allow your beetle to roam around freely. I keep mine in glass or plastic terrariums as it means it's easier to observe the beetle when they're out and about and they also make great display pieces. Therefore I would really recommend investing in a good terrarium. Once you've decided which kind of terrarium you will need, you'll need to fill it with substrate. As mentioned previously, you'll need a minimum of 6 inches of substrate for your beetle. Again, this will vary on the size of your beetle, so larger species of beetles will need more. For my Dorcas Antaeus, I have about 8 inches of substrate, which seems perfect for them. You'll need to make sure your substrate is kept moist. This means that it should be wet enough that it does not turn flaky or sandy, but not too wet that it becomes waterlogged, meaning that if you press it down, then water should not be squeezed out. Once you have the substrate sorted, you can begin to decorate the enclosure with leaf litter and perches for your beetles to climb on and hide under. For many species of beetles, particularly flower beetles, a temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius is ideal. Other beetles are fine at room temperature. However, a heat mat is never a bad idea, especially if you live in a country where the winters become colder. I use a heat mat for my sun beetles, which I keep on all year round. For my stag beetles, the LED light on the terrarium provides enough heat to maintain room temperature, even in the colder months. If you're storing your beetles in a container without a light, then it's advisable to get a small heat mat to ensure that the temperature doesn't drop too much. The upkeep of your enclosure after this is simple. I mist mine every few days to ensure that the humidity and moistness of the soil is maintained. You can change the substrate if it becomes too dry or if you notice any unwanted pests in your enclosure. There is a video on my channel which specifically looks at how to set up a terrarium for beetles, so feel free to check that out. Once they've settled in, it's time to start thinking about what to feed your beetle. The easiest option to, is to buy beetle jelly, which can be bought easily online or from pet shops or reptile stores. This is a simple way of feeding your beetles as they don't make much mess and do not rot. However, if you do not have access to beetle jelly, fruit and vegetables also work and make a great diet for your beetle. Mine particularly love banana, but they will eat most fruits. In fact, so far I haven't found a single fruit that they won't eat. With the jelly, I wait until it's finished before I replace it with a new one. However, with fruit and vegetables, I replace it as soon as it begins to decay as this attracts unwanted pests. So, there we go. That was a comprehensive beginner's guide to caring for adult beetles. I hope this has been useful and I wish you the best of luck with your new beetle. If you have any questions or requests for future videos then drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to get back to you. For more beetle content, why not head over to our Instagram at beetletv and give us a follow. 
Thanks for your support of the channel as always, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Beetle TV.